Welcome to our next unit. So far we have worked with lists and we have worked with for loops during this week. However, there is one more item we would like to show you and these are ranges. So what are ranges? What are they used for? In programming, you often need a sequence of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4 or 10, 9, 8, 7 and so on and so on. And these type of uh, numbers, these type of sequences of numbers can be produced using a range. A range can really easily create these type of sequences. And important, the for loop and the range work perfectly together. It's showtime again. Open your notebook and let's look how it really works. So here you can see a range. First, just as a comment, you can see we have a range. We can enter one parameter, here's a five, and then a sequence of number is created. It's five numbers starting from zero. We always start with zero, remember our indices. And uh, you get simply this range of numbers from zero to four. Actually, it's five numbers. So what you should learn is that the last number is not really part of the range. You can have two parameters. If you do not want to start with zero, then you can add a second parameter. And then the first parameter is a start value. And the second value is the ending parameter of the sequence. But important, the first parameter is really part of the sequence, whereas the 16 in this case is not part. So it's the first number which is not no longer belonging to this sequence. So again, you can see we have 10, 11, up to 15, 10 is included, the 16 is not included. So you have two borders. The, the smaller one, the, on the, on the, on the starting one, is uh, part of the sequence. The second one is not. And so far you've seen that we always step one by one. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 and so on. Or 11 plus 1 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13. And you can change this step parameter um, by adding a third parameter into in here. So having 2, 12 and 3. Yeah, again, we have the 2, which is the first um, number of the sequence, the first number of the range. 12 is the first one which does not belong to it. And then we have the step 3. So we have 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. And 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 plus 3 is 14, which is bigger than our 12, bigger than our border, so it doesn't belong to the sequence anymore. And using this step factor and adding a minus, you, know, you can even go down in the sequence. So you have a sequence which is really decreasing. So 25 minus 5. So again, the 20 is part of the range, 5 is not. Minus 5 is a step factor, so you can see 20, 20 minus 5 is 15, 15 minus 5 is 10, 10 minus 5 is 5, but 5 is actually the first number which does not belong to the range. That's how range work, and you can make many use of it, you can use it in quite different ways just to create numbers. So let's have a look in these coding cells. For number in range 10, print the number. Now you can simply see we have line by line a printout starting by 0, going up to 9. That's exactly what we expected. So start if we have just one parameter, it's the ending parameter. We start by 0, that's the default value. We step by 1 and 10 is the first number which does not belong to the range. Um, for number in range 10 to 20, we do the same thing. Yeah, you can see 10 up to 19, each in one line is printed. 
20 is the first value which does not belong to the range, so it's uh, not printed out. And again, here we go down, yeah, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, yeah, and again you can see this is uh, um, exactly the starting value, which is part of the sequence, 0 is not part of the sequence anymore, minus tw tw 2 is the factor where we can step. You can have a look um, on, let's say, certain situations. What happens if we just say zero? Does it belong to the um, sequence? Does it not belong? So give it a try. There is no output yeah? because zero is the first value which does not belong to this um, range. Um, it's not printed out anything. The sequence is basically empty. Um, what happens if we say, for example, we would like to go from 0 to 10 and step down? Yeah? Then again, the sequence is empty because you're stepping in the wrong direction. Yeah? So the sequence directly is empty. So maybe you have to have a little bit care to take a little bit care when doing, when working with ranges. Think about which is the first, which is the last element, which one is included, which one is not included. Uh, I change it again and repair it, so now we have the same result. Let's do two exercises, combining range and input first. So what we actually would like to have is a range, which goes through the um, runs through the for loop, but we would like to hand in our parameters um, through the input function. So uh, what we can do is I say start equals to input. Um, what is the starting value? And remember, input always gives back a string, so what we have to do is to cast it into an integer. So what is our stop value? Int input um, where to stop. And then we would like to get the step. Again, it's input um, how far, far should we step? So now we have these through three values and we can start our range and run through the for loop for e in range, start, stop, step, and we print out our e, our i, sorry. So what is our starting value? Let's uh, start with our 10. Yeah. Where to stop? A 30. Um, what would be the step? Takes a 5. And you can see we have 10 plus 5 is 15, plus 5 is 20, plus 5 is 25. And the next value 30 is actually the same as we have as a stop value. And this one does not belong to the range. Now let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's uh, do this famous FizzBuzz program. We should write a program that outputs the number from 1 to 100. You can easily do with the range. All numbers that are divisible by 3 should be replaced by a Fizz, by the string Fizz. And all numbers that are divisible by 5 should be replaced by Buzz. And if a number like 15 is both, divisible by 3 and 5, it should be fizzbuzz accordingly. So let's do it step by step. And remember, the divisibility, can, we can check using this um, modulo operator. Uh, if um, a certain number like, let's say, 10 is divisible by 5, then 10 divi div divided by 5 leaves no rest, so the modulo would be 0. Let's do it steps by step. Yeah, for e in range 101, 
Why 101? Because if you would like to go up to 100, then um, the 100 would not be included, so we have add one more number. And we should start with a 1, not with a 0, so let's put a 1 in here. Now we have to check the with divisibility. So let's do it with the if. Yeah? If um, i modulo 3 um, equals to 0, we say print, how was it called, fizz. And let's uh, make it easy for the moment. Let's say print i if it is not divisible. Okay, let's give it a try. And you see um, 1, 2, fizz, 4, 5, fizz, and so on and so on. And uh, we can go all the way and uh, yes, it works. However, it's not complete yet. Um, so we have to check once more. Yeah, so elif i oh sorry mod 5 equals to 0 print path and again you see seems to work fine however if you have a closer look then you see here at the 15, we do not have a bus fizz or fizz bus. We simply have a fizz. Why is that? Yeah. If, the, if we come to the number 15, then we have um, this print fizz. We find i um, is divisible by 3. So we go in, 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 in this case and we do not check the divisibility for 5 anymore. So what we do have to do is we have to enter a, third, a second if in here. Yeah? So we have to first check if it is uh, divisible by 5 as well. Yeah? So we check this 5, 0, if, um, sorry, if i modulo 5 equals to 0. And then we say print this bus and in the else case that means it is divisible divisible by three, otherwise it would not come into the situation. Um, but it's not divisible by five. Yeah, let me go in here. Let's check again, and you see the 15 becomes a fifth, fifth bus, the 13 becomes a fifth bus, fine. Maybe you remember um, our, one of our first lecture, uh, one of our first exercises. Maybe we could simplify it a little bit more. Now we have nested ifs, which is sometimes a little bit nasty. What we could do as well would be um, that we change the code a little bit and that we first check if both numbers are, if i is divisible by both 3 and 5, i mod 5 equals to 0. Yeah. In this case, we say print this bus. And here we say, okay, if not both, if i is not divisible by both, we simply check now um, if uh, it is divided by either 3 or by 5. So what you can see here is we have no nesting anymore. Instead, we have now four options. 
Either i is divisible by both 3 and 5, or it's only divisible by 3, or it's only divisible by 5, or it's not divisible at all. And then we have those three case, four cases, and again you can see it in the result. Now let's first give it a try. Uh, and you can see we have these four cases, numbers, fizzes, buzzes and fizz buzzes. So that's one thing you can do with rangers and uh, here it's combined with a for loop and with an if statement and with a modulo. So it brings together some of those things we have learned so far. So what have you learned in this unit? Using a range, we can create sequences of numbers. And these sequences of numbers are used again and again in programming. And as we have sequences and for loops really are based on uh, sequences, you can use ranges and for loops perfectly together. Make use of it.